Well, welcome to uh, questions three and four, taken from chapter two of the um, <coughs> Fundamentals of Particle Technology. Uh, these questions are on calculating the means of a distribution, the mean of the number distribution in question three, the mean of a mass distribution in question four. Well, what's in front of us is uh, what's actually in the book. Uh, quite a lot of words there. Essentially, it's this question down here. Uh, calculate. Oops, if I can just get to the. That's it. It's this question down here. Calculate the mean by number for the question three. And we're given three opportunities, uh, 12.4, or three options rather, 12.4, 13.5, 25, and 28.2 microns. <coughs> so that's the four options that we've been given for the mean of the distribution. So we better actually remind ourselves of the, uh, of the data before we can um, do the calculations. So let's come down. Here's, here's the data below. Okay. So but it's so you can still see it. Yep. Right. So what we had then was um, in, this is the data from question uh, question one I guess originally. Uh, where we have the size ranges of 5 to 7 microns, 7 to 10, 10 to 15, uh, all the way up to 40 to 50. No particles bigger than 50 microns, no particles smaller than 5 microns. And you can see the values of the particles in that range. There's 50 particles here in this range between 5 and 7, 150 particles between 7 and 10, 200 particles uh, between 10 and 50. The total number of particles is, is over here, 5525. Five. Okay, so we're calculating a mean. So we could calculate the mean in the conventional sort of way. We're, we're going to need a single value to represent the range here. Let's take 6 microns for the um, first range here. Uh, this one over here is 8.5 microns. Uh, these, these are the numbers actually given here. Okay, the midpoints. So we could calculate the mean in the conventional way, where we're taking 6 microns to represent the first range. And how many particles do we have in that range? We have 50. Okay, and then we could add to that the from the next range eight and a half because that's the midpoint number of particles 150 so this is much like how you would calculate an average if you were calculating an average of exam results for example the number of students uh, getting each grade so we're going up to um, midpoint 45 microns times by Five. Five particles. Okay, and if we were to sum that lot together and divide by 525, the total number of particles present, that would give us the mean by number Okay, of the distribution, much like average exam mark. Um, representing this algebraically though, what we've got here are the midpoints. So if we use x for particle diameter again, we're talking about increments. So it's the midpoint times x times by the frequency in the increment. And we're going to have to sum these all up and divide by our 525 particles which was the summation of all the frequencies that occurred. Okay, that is the same as summation of 
each mid size <coughs> times by that. Okay, uh, we've calculated this already because this is the relative number of um, particles present, the relative number. So all we're really talking about is multiplying the uh, mid size, each one of the mid sizes, the six microns, eight and a half microns, multiplied by let's call it n of i, where n of i is the relative number, which makes the calculation much easier to do because we've already calculated the relative numbers. We needed that to plot the cumulative number under size. So all we're doing is taking a mid size, six microns here, and multiplying not by 50, but by that value, eight and a half by that value. These are our relative numbers. And then summing up. So essentially what we're doing is we're working out the contribution to the mean value from this range, and then summing it to the contribution from this range, and then this range, and then all, all together. Okay, is this a better way of doing it? Mm, I would argue yes, but there isn't a great deal in it until we come to do calculate the mean by mass. Because when you have the mean by mass, we have a little bit more of a problem um, but we can do that the same way. We can do the same sort of calculation. Uh, so mean by mass, mean by mass is again going to be equal to our midpoints. The, the six, the eight and a half and all the rest of it times by the relative mass from each of the increments. Okay, so we've got that for relative number, this for relative mass. Relative mass. So that's really question three and question four. Let's have a look at the values. Uh, here they are, and here are our midpoints, here are our number of particles, but we're not calculating it using that technique, we'll just use the relative number technique. So here are our relative numbers, and what I called n of i in the, um, on the worksheet there, and here is our contribution to the mean, and you can see uh, the mean has a, a uh, the the number distribution mean has a reasonably high contribution from the lower values because the lower sizes because there's a lot of particles in those lower sizes. If you sum them all up, you get a, an answer of thirteen and a half microns for the uh, mean by number. But if you do the same thing in question four and calculate the relative uh, mass and the mean by, by mass, it's actually now 28.2 microns. So the mean value by number is 13.5, mean value by mass is 28.2. Again, it's the same distribution, same material. It's just a different way of looking at it. And you'll notice that the contribution to the mean from the smaller, smaller sizes is negligible. The biggest contribution to the mean, look at that, 7.3, 10, comes from the bigger sizes. There's only five particles uh, in, the, uh, in the bigger size, so that gives a relatively small contribution to the mean when looking at the mean by number, 
but it gives a very substantial contribution to the mean when looking at the mean by mass because bigger particles have big volume and therefore big mass. So we're back to the important takeaway message that how big are your particles? Well, it depends on how you want to look at them. Do you want to look at them on the basis of a number distribution? It gives you 13 and a half microns. Or a mass distribution? It gives you over 28 microns as the mean value. So it's really important that we don't just talk about mean particle size. We have to specify by mass, by volume, whatever. Okay, I think that's all I need to do for questions three and questions four. They're fairly straightforward. So uh, the next question is all to do with something that's very important, specific surface area per unit volume.